See, the thing about me is that all my life I've been pretty um thirsty for a girlfriend. And I mean, if you haven't seen my video lineup, oh, clearly I still am. Ladies, you can follow me on Twitter. But the thing was that in middle school, I was dehydrated. Your boy was in the middle of the Sahara, lips cracking, some beating down, stranded. Got, got the do rag towel thing on my head. What, what is it called? A kofia? A, a karate? A kifi? I got a kifi on my head. Like, someone please give me a Sprite. Actually, is that is that culturally insensitive for me not to know how to say? And you know, I'm sure it's fine. But growing up, and especially in middle school, me and my parents weren't necessarily always on the same page when it came to, to dating. And, and by that, I mean I was chilling on chapter one, first, maybe second paragraph. And they were on page 457 in the epilogue author's credits index on the third page of the third Oxford edition. It was no girlfriends, no dating, not. Nah. And side note, they always follow that up by saying you, you can go on a group date though with five to six people, but you can't go on a regular date. Um, uh, okay, first off, mom, I hope you're watching this because what in the absolute hell is a group date? Like, are you talking about hanging out with other people? Because that that's that sounds like just hanging out with other people. What was the purpose of that rule? What, what did you think 13 year old me was going to be banging girls in the back of the skate zone 51 bathroom or something? Uh, because newsflash, if that was already the case, adding five or six people to that equation would be an awful uh, misjudgment. But anyway, I, I know most of you guys are, are probably thinking, oh, well, Kurt, how are your parents going to find out you have a girl? Friend. You can easily hide that from them. And you know what? You'd be right, but here's here's the thing though. For one, if there was any one thing that my parents drilled into my head, it's that you do not hide things from them. Ever. Ever. Or you will learn the hard way. And to be honest, I preferred keeping uh, the feeling in my ass. So, but the funny thing was, even that wasn't my um, biggest deterrent. I had another issue uh, that wouldn't uh, let me pursue uh, any girls, and it was, well, I was too scared to talk to them. Which I know, I know, I know, totally defeats the purpose of wanting to have a girlfriend, but, but look, I, I wasn't the most logical kid, okay? Like, can we skip the whole potential rejection phase and just get straight to the, the comfortable dating thing, please? But at any rate, I, I had a friend who I'd always talk to about my, uh, my drought, and we get into it every day about what I should or could or needed to do, and we'll call this guy the Bowie. One day, Bowie and I were talking, like usual, and he told me he had the answer to my problem and proceeded to open a web page on the computer and showed me this girl. <laughs> Bowie tells me that this is his friend from a whole other school district and he told her about me and she was interested. His grand solution was because this girl didn't go to our school. My only option was to get to know her online. Dog, that is perfect. This is two birds with, with one stone. All that fear of consequence went right out the window. Like this girl was worth it. Like no one could touch me. No ass whooping could break me. This was the one. I had to do it. So cut to one week later, uh, we're dating because again, in middle school. Over the next two weeks, we were texting, calling, Facebooking. And this, ladies and gentlemen, would be the one of two things that would eventually end up to be my downfall. So the thing was that whenever I texted her, she texts back immediately, you know, because I'm essentially the, the black 13 year old Hugh Hefner. And then I text her back immediately because I have no sense of pace. So we'd be texting all day. Like my face was in my phone 24 seven. And keep in mind, this was 2009 where you had to make five keystrokes to type in the two letter word hi. No one was texting anyone on their phones unless it was someone really worthwhile. And obviously, uh, they peep this. Like, to be honest, I might as well bust it out a megaphone and turn on the local neighborhood tornado siren and just been like, attention, mom and dad. I think you're stupid and I'm in a secret relationship. I'm going to skate zone for the one tomorrow. Every day would be cat and mouse because they'd actively try to look at my phone or in my messages to see what I was doing and who I was texting. So I was constantly on high alert, phone on person at all times, never out of sight. That is until. I slipped up. 
Okay, so one day I'm rushing late for school, right? Like, like I woke up five minutes before the bus arrived. I sprinted around the house and put on whatever I could, grabbed as much as I could, went downstairs to the kitchen table where my book bag was and put my phone in my pocket. Then I put my stuff in my bag and ran out to catch the bus. So I get on, sit down, and as per usual, I go to hit my boo thing with our relationship mandated good morning text because I'm an amazing boyfriend. So I reached for my pocket from my phone and felt nothing. How? How? I, I put it in my pocket. I, I put it in my pocket. Why is it not here? And then I think back. Like, you ever have the time when you, you remember something, like, completely wrong? Well, on that bus, I don't know what happened. Maybe it's because I literally woke up, like, eight seconds ago. But at that moment, I realized I didn't put my phone in my pocket. I left it on the kitchen table for anyone to see. You I'm a very um anxious person because I know my parents are going to look at my phone. Like there's no question. Like it's done. It's a wrap. It's all over. Like I could just feel my heart drop. Like you ever been so distressed that you can't grasp the concept of tomorrow? Like you're so anxious that you don't see yourself seeing the next day. All that matters is that moment. Well, that was 13 year old me. 13 year old life crisis me. The day dragged on like nobody's business every hour felt like four i felt like i was waiting to be executed like your boy's on the gallows it's over my head's coming off uh watch the splash zone it's a wrap and before you know it i'm home at the front door staring down my fate i take a deep breath and step in the door there they are my mom and dad just chilling in the living room waiting and my mom has my phone in her hand. Oh, what is up, y'all? We are back. It has been a bit. I am, oof, goodness gracious, it has been a bit. I'm finally getting stuff finished, so more videos will still be on the way, so don't worry. This was a really big deviation from what I usually do, so your feedback is incredibly important. I want you to let me know, did you like this story video? So, 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 I'm gonna have a poll. If for the next video you want part two of this story, vote for that. Or if you want the next episode of Not So Clear, vote for that. Let me know, this is super important, seriously. Happy Halloween, everybody. It's good to be back. Uh, more videos on the way. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Peace.